thank you for doing this. Uh -huh. If you wouldn't mind, give me your name, your title, and your responsibilities. So my name is Colleen Sellers. I'm the group brand director at Johnson & Johnson, and I manage the OTC allergy portfolio, so Zyrtec and Benadryl. Well, congrats on the, on the thank FE you. that you won. Um, it's for Muddle No More, right. right? So tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind that campaign. Sure. So Muddle No More is our campaign for our Zyrtec brand of allergy products. When we were looking at positioning the brand and coming out with a new campaign in the summer of 2011, we went and talked to consumers. And one of the things that we realized as we were talking to them is they felt like a lot of the products in the space weren't talking to them because they were they pictured people running through fields of flowers and being happy about their allergies right. and not being authentic about how much how hard it is sometimes to have allergies. So we took a bit of a departure and um, formed a consumer insight about the fact that when you have allergies, sometimes you muddle through them. And we found humorous ways to show them muddling. Um, so that became the Muddle No More campaign. That's great. So an FE is about effectiveness, marketing yeah. effectiveness. How do you think about marketing effectiveness? What, what would you def how would you define it? Sure. So I think the most basic way of defining effectiveness is through sales. So have you seen sales increase? Have you seen your market share improve? Which both things we have. Um, I think the other way you can think about it is how do your consumers relate to you? Do you feel like they are, do consumers feel like you're talking more authentically to them, that they're more part part of their, the conversation with you? Do they feel like you get them? And so one of our key metrics actually on the Zyrtec brand is trying to see improvement in the brand, being the brand that gets them um, versus just a brand that they buy. So putting together a campaign like that and coordinating that, mm -hmm. you've got partners involved. Sure. Tell me a little bit about you know you as the client side, mm -hmm. but also your agency partners, and how do you how did that all come together? Great. So um, we have been with JWT New York for um, the whole life of Zyrtec. So Zyrtec is a fairly young brand, and they have been our agency for the whole time with a pretty consistent team on it. Um, when we were looking to come up with a new campaign for Zyrtec, it was done very jointly with them. So we went and um, the strategic planners as well as account and creative came with our marketers and our um, global insight partners at J&J &J to really delve into the consumer insights to find a new way to position and um, talk to consumers. So we have an amazing relationship. I think that sometimes you can't always tell who's the client and who's the agency, which is probably the best thing. The best way and, and a really good, um, a really good sign that you're working very well together. So we partner, um, we partnered for a good six months in trying to find the right consumer insights to talk about. And then as we built the campaign, we brought in our other agency partners um, at the, you know our PR agency Hunter or our J3 our media buying agency to really make sure that we were um, using the insights across all of the different um, channels mm -hmm. and. Um, think of ways that we can make sure that we're always talking to the consumer in the right way. So you've reached a level of success in your career. Tell me a little bit, is there something special that fuels you or how do you get inspired every day? Yeah, so um, I think a couple of things inspire me and um, both actually are people. So my consumers really inspire me. I love getting to understand them more and really diving deep into the consumer insights. I think that um, you know, in fact, we make people's lives better every day because allergies can be a real pain in the neck. And so it's really wonderful to be able to improve someone's life and get that feedback. So that inspires me, as well as honestly, the people on my team, both on my team at Johnson & Johnson, as well as my agency partners. We have really an incredible partnership across, across and l watching them grow and learn and become even better marketers is a truly inspiring part of my job. Well, as an allergy sufferer, I'm glad somebody like you is out there working on my behalf. What do you think is the most important marketing trend or opportunity today? So I think in general, one of the most important things is that your consumers want and demand a conversation with you at all times. So they demand an engagement. And if you, you know, we're kind of trained classical marketing is a little bit, I'm going to push a message out there and hope they respond. But I'm not always sure what that response is. And I, I watch these trends like what is effectiveness? Is it sales? Is it market share? That's how we were trained. Really now marketing has become, we're going to put something out there and we're going to 
you're going to respond to us whether or not we like it, <laughs> whether or not we're expecting it, and we need to be able to respond to you. And that is going to create that conversation is ultimately going to create either the loyalty or disloyalty. It's going to create the purchase and the repeat. And that's a much harder thing to do because it's not static. You can't go out and test it, right? You can't test your messages like you used to be able to. And so to me, that's one of the bigger trends. And it's not you know, I think for a long time, people were like, oh, it's all social or it's all digital. But that's actually true of TV commercials, too, now. So everything has to be part of a conversation. So we've talked a lot about change and trends. Okay. Um, what do you see changing about the organization? And it could be yeah. yours, but it could be organ marketing organizations yeah. in general. What do you see for the next five, ten years? Yeah. So I think, you know, as much as we said, digital is part of the mix, but it doesn't, it's not the idea, mm -hmm. right? I think that digital is, though, much more of a skill set. And uh, we call it competencies at J&J, &J, but they're very much part of your marketing competencies now. So as we're, you know, a couple of five years ago, it was a nice to have to have a marketer who had experience in digital. Now it's actually very much part of the expectation that that's part of the training you're going to get as much it is to go on, you know, it used to be, oh, you have to be on a TV advertising shoot. Now digital is much more part of that. So you have to understand social, you have to manage part of the social campaigns or digital campaign. And that's given equal weight to TV um, in the organization. So I think that from a marketers and an ABMs and brand manager perspective, that's been a change. I think one of the changes that we've seen, at least at Johnson & Johnson, but I'm sure it's probably uh, everywhere, is that they're now digital marketing centers of excellence. So we rely on them to help us understand what the trends are, how to navigate them. And we talked about healthcare marketing. Actually, in social, healthcare marketing becomes really a bit challenging, right? Because we hear things that we used to not hear. And so we'll sometimes hear safety information mm -hmm. that we really want to hear and we want to keep track of. And so we had to devise systems to be able to do that. And that wasn't, that used to be part of our job. So um, that's been a real change for us. And then we really just have di like truly digital marketers are part of our teams now to help make sure that the learnings on say a Zyrtec actually get translated onto the rest of the rest of the brand so we can um, really use all the learnings together. Right. So stepping back from Zyrtec, yeah. Benadryl, Johnson & Johnson, the kids at home, if you had it to do all over again, what would you do? Yeah. Would you pick a different, would, not, yeah. not would you pick a different career, but what yeah. would you want to go pursue? Yeah. So I'm lucky. I absolutely love my job and I love my husband and my kids. <laughs> I think the thing that I would do over again is learn to be, you know, we talked about like failure from a digital perspective, right? I think I would be more open to my own personal failures earlier and like not try to just get beyond them, but actually learn from them. Like we do with digital and everything else. It's been like a big learning in my life in the past couple of years is that of course not everything's going to go perfect. So can you be okay with being a little more imperfect and learning a little bit more from those experiences? That's a great message for young mm -hmm. people coming up in their <laughs> careers. I wish I had that advice myself yeah. personally. Thank well, you. I just want to say thank you for joining us. And thank you it was for so, having me. I really appreciate it. Such a great it. conversation.